How can you let other kingsters know what you're into? Have you ever heard of the hanky code or flagging? Today, that's what we're going to talk about. Hey guys, it's Morgan with BDSM Relationships and Education. Thank you very much for checking out this video. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and then click on the little bell icon and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Today we're going to talk about flagging and specifically the hanky code. Now the way this works is that it's a way that you can uh, you know, indicate to other people who are in the know what you're into. Uh, and it is basically the use of a bandana or other similar item and you wear it on one side of the body or the other to indicate uh, that you're a dominant or a top, a submissive or a bottom, and the color of the handkerchief or a bandana or whatever it is you choose to use uh, will indicate the activity that you're into. I'm going to go into more detail on all of that stuff in a few minutes. I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page and know what it is we're talking about. So the hanky code came uh, into, at least the modern version of it, came into being in the early 1970s. And it was the gay leather man uh, culture that sort of came up with this. Uh, partially because you couldn't be openly gay in the 70s, uh, that was just asking for trouble. Uh, so many people, uh, unfortunately, were very firmly and securely in the closet, uh, and they were only able to express who they really were uh, you know, in certain areas and with certain people. And so using this sort of secret code of bandanas in the back pocket was a way to indicate to other men what you were into, who you were, and what you were looking for. Uh, now this is something that has gone on, uh, you know, for hundreds of years throughout history. Um, basically people would use various symbols to indicate like, hey, I, you know, I'm a sailor, I've just gotten off the boat, I'm not looking for any you know, uh, female sex workers, I'm looking for uh, another man or something along those lines. So those kind of ideas were just basically brought into the 1970s because there was a need for uh, people to indicate who they were looking for uh, in a very discreet manner. So the hanky code itself has sort of waxed and waned in popularity over the years, and it seems like it's sort of regaining popularity in the last couple of years now. Uh, and it seems to be mostly within the pansexual community, which has taken a lot of cues from uh, the queer BDSM scene, uh, but also with, within the lesbian scene in a very specific way, which I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So again, the idea is that you can easily indicate uh, who you are, what you're looking for, or who you're looking for very easily, and others in the know will be able to pick up on those symbols. Now unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way in practice. Uh, a lot of people will wear bandanas uh, just because it's a cool fashion statement, or just because for whatever reason, I mean, we've seen gang members use bandanas to indicate which gang they're in or like their gang affiliation. Uh, so that's a pretty common thing, uh, depending on where you live. But uh, so you can't always count on a hanky to let you know who somebody is or what they're into. Um, they could be flagging or they could just be making a fashion statement. It's a really tough call. Uh, now context of course always matters. So if you are within a kink party, like a play party or a munch or something like that, then chances are a lot higher that somebody utilizing a bandana in this way uh, will be indicating that they are looking for whatever sort of play. One of the other problems is that while there are some sort of universal colors within the hanky code, a lot of it is regional. So uh, what means something to me here in Toronto, Canada is going to mean something totally different to a leather man in San Francisco or to uh, you know a lesbian that's into kink in London. So I mean it's it's you, you can't always count on it, especially if you're not using one of this sort of core colors. For instance, I uh, is, hey, I'm into play piercing. Is that a purple bandana or a maroon one? Does maroon just mean blood sports in general? And then 
purple is more specific to piercing. It really depends on where you go. Uh, it's certainly not a universal thing. Uh, the other problem is what if you are unsure about the difference between Hunter Green and Kelly Green? Because you'd be indicating two dramatically different things if, depending on which one of those you chose. Um, but I mean, my interpretation of your shade of green may be different than uh, what you were intending to advertise. So obviously, uh, a bandana, a hanky, flagging, whatever, is not consent. It's simply the beginning of a conversation um, and sort of like an icebreaker, a way that you can approach somebody and say, hey, I see that uh, you're flagging for this, and then you can have a conversation. Because even if somebody is looking for the exact same thing that you are and your roles are complementary, there may not be chemistry between you, there may not be attraction, uh, you may be the wrong gender or the wrong orientation or whatever. Uh, so just keep that in mind that it's certainly not consent, it's simply the beginning of a conversation, an icebreaker. So how the whole thing works is that you place a bandana on, usually in the back pocket, but on one side of the body or the other. If you are a top or a dominant, you would put it on the uh, left side of your body, um, indicating, hey, I am advertising this sort of thing. Um, and then the color would indicate what it is you're looking for. Uh, you would put it on the right side of your body if you're a submissive or a bottom. And um, then you would have your various colors. Now there are some, like I said, that are a little more universal. So the most common ones are black, which indicates that you are looking for heavy SM play. Uh, dark blue generally means that you're looking for anal sex, whereas light blue would mean you're looking for oral sex. Uh, now remember, the roots of this code are within gay men's culture, so a lot of these simply talk about sexual activities rather than kinky activities. Um, a grey bandana would indicate that you're into bondage, but it really depends on the shade of grey. Ha ha. Um, and, and I'm trying really hard not to make Fifty Shades of Grey jokes right now. But it would depend on which shade of grey you've chosen because they can mean different things. And again, interpretation of which shade of grey could mean different things to different people. What I may see as light grey, you might think is dark grey, right? A uh, green bandana, just sort of the generic green, usually indicates that someone's looking for a sugar relationship or a paid relationship, either, you know, paying or as the one getting paid. Uh, so that's something uh, to keep in mind. Orange uh, is another very famous color because it usually means that somebody has very few limits or they're up for pretty much anything, pretty much anywhere, not necessarily with anyone though. Um, that is the one thing that, I mean, they obviously would want to be attracted to you or have some sort of connection that way. Uh, red flagging usually uh, means fisting, but of course, like I said, I mean, maroon could mean blood sports or piercing, so you gotta be careful about your choice of red because if you're just looking to get fisted and I see red and interpret it as, ooh, someone who's into blood sports, that's gonna be a totally different thing. And of course, yellow means water sports. Now, a lot of lists that you see uh, talking about the hanky code will give you all kinds of different, very, very specific colors. Like I said, the difference between Hunter Green and Kelly Green could mean a big difference in what you're looking for. Uh, some examples of that would be a camo bandana, where that person might be looking for outdoor activity, outdoor sex. A rust-colored bandana could indicate that they were looking for pony play, and a baby uh, blanket rather than a bandana would indicate that they are an ABDL or looking to play with an ABDL, um, adult baby diaper lover. Uh, just remember that the more obscure your flag is, the less or the fewer people that are going to be able to recognize what you mean by it. So again, normally the way it works is you put the bandana in the back pocket, on the appropriate side of the body. If you get confused about which side of the body it's supposed to go on, think about how we write dominant slash submissive or top slash bottom. When we write it, we always write dominant or top first, and that is on the left side of the slash, so the left side of the body. Then we write submissive or bottom, which is on the right side of the slash or the right side of the body. 
Um, so if you, you know, don't have, aren't wearing pants, you're wearing a skirt, if you just don't like putting things in your back pocket, if you're like me, you're in a wheelchair, you're, no one's gonna see my butt when I'm out and about, um, you can put the bandana elsewhere. So popular spots are to tie it around your wrist or to use different accessories, sort of like um, I've seen, uh, basically it's a flower made out of a bandana or the bandana material and you can put that in your hair on one side or the other. Um, a lot of people are using like ribbons or other things to indicate what it is they're looking for. Um, so you can do that sort of thing. Uh, but again, it, you know, if you're using something that's really unexpected, then people aren't going to necessarily interpret it as flagging. So you may run into problems. Uh, something interesting that I found out is that in the lesbian scene, a lot of the femme lesbians are using uh, nail polish colors as their own code. So you paint your nails whatever color you want, and then you do like an accent nail, so usually the ring finger or the middle two fingers, a different color depending on which hand it is, shows which side of the slash you're on, and then the color indicates what it is you're looking for. So um, I kind of laughed when I read that because uh, I do a lot of nail art, as I'm sure you guys have noticed, um, and I, I probably have been flagging some really fucked up stuff over the years purely by accident. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, who knows what I've been telling people I'm into. Oops. <laughs> so for everybody who's been asking me, you know, how can I recognize other kinksters in public? How do I know what people are into? How do I tell if this person's dominant or submissive or whatever it is? The hanky code is one of those ways to do it, but the context really matters. I would not rely on this uh, anywhere other than a kink activity or, you know, within clear specific space uh, because you, you could be totally wrong and it would be really embarrassing to walk up to somebody who happens to have a bandana in their back pocket or on their purse or whatever and be like, hey, hey you're totally into piss play. Awesome. So am I. And then they're like looking at you like you're completely insane. Um, also, I wouldn't suggest that particular approach to anyone, even at a kink party. Um, it's a little weird. But anyways, uh, you know, make sure you are, you know what context you're in and, and use a bit of, ca uh, you know, uh, caution when it comes to approaching people who you think may be flagging. They may have no idea what you're talking about. Anyways, guys, uh, have you tried flagging? What are your favorite things to flag? Has it ever worked out for you? Have you met a play partner or a date or anything like that? Uh, pick up play at a party. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your flagging stories. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.